Who would be a Wolves fan, eh? On goes Paul. People might yet win it here for Wolves. Flash in the shot. What a goal! Hi everybody and welcome to your latest episode of GTA Fancast. I've had the Hollywood treatment, I'm going for a little bit of a different vibe today so please do let me know if this works for you and uh, any further feedback I will factor into the broadcasts but I just wanted to really get stuck into what I think everybody's talking about at the moment and that is the main man Ruben Neves. He has basically put in two of the best performances I think we've seen from him at Premier League level in the last couple of games, probably caveated by the fact that we're working with um, probably two of the worst teams I think I've ever seen at Premier League level in the last few years. Nevertheless, I think it's safe to say that this is the best version of Ruben that we've seen at Wolves, for sure. And um, he only seems to be going from strength to strength at the moment. I'm going to be looking at a few different aspects of his game and... Really, I think there's three three enhancements he's made um, from the start of this season in particular. And Bruno Large has really got the best out of him as he slightly dropped a little bit, I think, um, towards the end of the Nuno era. But um, you can see why he's become such a key player for us with these three elements that I'm going to refer to specifically. And I'm going to start with the second phase of set pieces and, and how he's really been able to kind of take advantage of some really good kind of situations and you'll see here and again referring to the to the most recent fixture of course to begin with goal against Everton it was actually a free kick from the left hand side as you can see in that first picture um with Jao Martino setting up to deliver the ball into the box from that left and I've pointed out where Ruben is he generally tends to kind of position himself out towards the opposite end of the penalty area just outside it so if there was a corner from the right hand side perhaps he would tend to probably position himself out towards the left-hand side of the D on the penalty area, looking for any of those clearances to come and land to him. It's all obviously very scientific. Um, maybe if it was a near post delivery, he'd stand more towards the right as the clearance is likely to go out towards uh, the touchline on that nearer side um, and vice versa. So clearly the, the, the onus was on Martino to probably deliver this ball towards the back post and in the event that a Wolves player doesn't get their head on it, then Neves is in a relatively good position uh, to pick the ball up. As it turned out, um, as you can see there, the ball was flicked on out towards the touchline and Leander Dendonka went out and and, and, and fetched it. And really, I think that the, the aim of the game here is to make sure that we get Ruben on the ball as quickly as possible to then make something of the next phase. And what we saw from him from there was just a real piece of class. And I think it's something that I'll touch on a bit later as well, because it's another element of his game that he's added, and that's actually crossing the ball. But as you see here, it's become a really key element of our play. And with him being the most inventive player, our most creative passer, probably our most technically gifted at, at striking the ball and delivering the ball, whether it be perhaps a shot, perhaps a pass, something that you see slightly different to, to what everybody else is watching. You'll notice as well, there are some stats scrolling across the bottom of the screen here on the ticker. One of them being that he's actually having less shots per 90 than he has at any point um, in his Wolves career so far, but has is having more shots on target per 90. So I think he's making much better decisions when he does receive the ball in these kind of positions. Just to move on to another situation that um, we clearly profited from, really terrible delivery on this one uh, from Marcel out on that right-hand side into the box. But again, received the ball in the centre of the, the goals. On this occasion, I don't think you could have really argued with him maybe taking a shot on from that position. But, I mean, if you look at that still um, in, in the second picture... How he's managed to spot Romain Saïs uh, in the box and, and, and flick the ball over the top of the defence uh, into his path is just an otherworldly level of vision. And um, we really are blessed to kind of have that kind of ability at our disposal. And finally, um, we'll remember this one fondly as well. Again, another 
corner that's gone wrong, really, the ball actually came back out to Pedenz, who delivered again. And like I, like I mentioned, with the ball kind of heading towards the back post, really the only thing a defender can do if they do clear it is clear it out towards the edge of the box on that fo- on that far side, which is why Neves tends to pos- position himself on that side if, if the delivery is as such. And again, picked out an unbelievable pass. You know, you wouldn't begrudge him a shot especially with his quality. We know he hasn't necessarily produced with the regularity that he had done um, earlier on in his Wolves career, but an unbelievable pass into Pedence, who then squares the ball for Romain Saiz to to begin the comeback in that game as well. So, yeah, I, I think I think that's a really important um, element to his game that he's added. But another one that I, I don't think many of us necessarily anticipated seeing was actually him carrying the ball further forward. And, you know, it's 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 something that, with his physical attributes, doesn't necessarily lend itself um, to to him being really proficient at. But I think there's a maturity kind of arriving within his game at the moment. He's always been a relatively static central midfielder in possession, receives, gives, receives, gives. You know, really good at switching the play. But I think he's he's learned that teams have begun to press him better. Teams are wary of the threat. They know that he's got real quality on the ball. And we've seen even in certain games this season, even though he's been really quite excellent, he has struggled against teams who will look to really press high against us and stop us playing the ball into him and then then back out from midfield. So being able to carry the ball, being able to resist that press is really, really important, I think. And he's starting to, to develop that slightly. This was actually a situation uh, against Brentford away. We'd... we'd gone two one up in this game and um he's, he's pushing further forward he's he's definitely playing higher up the pitch and um, you can see so again some of the stats that are played that are playing across the the ticker at the bottom more passes under pressure yeah you know, he's, he's, he's inviting that pressure on he's happy to have that pressure in certain circumstances and he's looking to play positively from there here you can see like i say he skipped past the challenge in the midfield area he's taken the ball forward and another one that um that has that has come to fruition as well. He's using his left foot more. On this occasion he slides Adama Troy or Ray in, who unfortunately um was offside and the goal didn't count. But just another element to his play that I don't think we'd necessarily seen too much of um earlier on in his Wolves career and um we're, we're definitely reaping the benefits of that. On this occasion, again going back to the Everton game, I mean look, let's be honest Everton were, were pretty much non-existent in midfield, but it still takes a very good player to, to take advantage of that. They were made to really kind of chase shadows um, in that second half in particular. And I think oh, what I like about this is the fact that when Neves tends to play in the three in midfield, he actually, you know, previously would have sat deeper, wouldn't have really been tasked with getting forward and getting on the ball. But even on this occasion, you know, Neves will... Was was able to go and express himself a little bit. Bruno wasn't necessarily saying to him, "I want you to sit deep, central, and that's it." Here you can see he's picked the ball up, um, kind of 30, 40 yards from goal, our own goal maybe. And in the second, still is when he actually releases the ball to get Marcel into the penalty area. He's gone past a couple of players. He's drove with the ball again, not a, not a necessarily great pace, but he's got that maturity to to see that you know what. If I've got players running at me at speed, I can flick it past them and and really take advantage of the space that they offer in behind. And on this occasion, Everton really couldn't live with him. So I think we're going to see a bit more of that, hopefully, going forward. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's something that he can continue to add to his game as teams look to press him really high and really like kind of vociferously. And hopefully um, we can learn to play a little bit better against the, the likes of Crystal Palace and other teams as a result of that. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up as well was that he's simply playing higher up the pitch and he's operating in these spaces that we like to call the half spaces and he's also crossing the ball more. Now, it's probably worth just, just highlighting exactly what I mean by the half space and really you're looking at the two zones around the penalty area and up to the halfway line where managers would like to really get their number 10s on the ball, You know, really dangerous parts of the field in between a centre half and a full back perhaps. And if you look at the, this is actually um, Nevers' touch map against Watford. He is generally right side biased with Matinho kind of featuring out towards the left, especially in the two. But 
he, he picks up those positions when the ball goes out towards the right flank in high areas of the pitch. Maybe the wing backs received it. He's always the first pass inside to then try and make something happen. And what he's done a lot more of this season as well is he's actually started to cross the ball a hell of a lot more. He is a um, he's, he's a talented player, obviously on the ball, but he's never really looked to cross the ball on too many occasions. But I think, you know, it's it's something that he can add to his game. It's something that you know, the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold, perhaps, or, or Kevin De Bruyne would really kind of, you know, take advantage of in those positions. And um, if we kind of have a look through a couple of situations where um, where Ruben's actually, actually had the ball in these positions, you can see here, we're not a crossing team, that's, that's for sure. But if you put someone of Ruben's quality in a position like this, the first image in particular, he's got that ability to really whip a ball in behind a back four and find someone with with, with, a, with a good teasing cross. We saw we saw you know the, the wing play almost that he that he delivered against Everton, which was really really promising. But there were other situations here against Watford. Um, the Brentford one is actually a situation where he's passed the ball inside to Matinho, and then we've gone on to to. Score score that wonderful first goal against Brentford and it's just a, another weapon in the armory that I think the team has now because he's clearly worked on it you, you you notice there's a there's a bit more quality on it he looks to deliver it with pace um with a bit of shape on it as well and from these positions as you can see with the stats that are kind of running across the ticker again you're looking at you know, more crosses than any PL season um, up to this point already. More passes into the penalty area per 90 than any PL season as well. But ultimately, what we want is to see him in this kind of position where he took advantage of that and scored that sumptuous goal against Watford as well. But I, I just think, you know, we're really, you know, at a, at a critical time of his career. Of course, we understand that his level's, are probably going to go beyond Wolves as a club at, as, at this moment in time. We understand that he's not necessarily, um, you know, got got the got the, the the players around him to necessarily keep him uh, interested in the project, keep keep him to, to kind of keep up with the level of progression that he's offering us at the moment. So we're at a juncture where we need to either tie him down or potentially sell him and reinvest because let's be fair, his value probably has never been so high he's, he's becoming an exceptional elite Premier League midfielder and I'm sure there are plenty of teams across Europe who'd be more than interested to take him off our hands if the the price was right if he was available now for me let's be honest he's, he's, he's not he's been the best midfielder I've probably ever seen at the club now I can safely say Matinho was that player up until the last kind of few months but Neves has just come into his own and Really, he's the future of the club. He's a leader within the team now. And in in real terms, I think we should be breaking the bank to try and keep him at the club if we can. But what can we do? You know, it's 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 a situation that needs to be sorted, uh, probably in earnest at the moment. And uh, we'll have to wait and see what, what the hierarchy at the club uh, look to do on that one. They've obviously just tied down uh, Pedro Neto. And that's a nice coup for the club. But if, if Ruben Neves was to follow, I think that would be the biggest signing that we could make this summer. So, I mean, hopefully that can happen. But um, until then, we'll just enjoy every little bit of football that Ruben is offering us now because it has been something to watch so far this season.